Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we are talking about something um, very important, and that is the first uh, couple days, or I'm going to say 72 hours, of your mead's life. When you first start the mead, from the moment you put the water, yeast, honey, all of that together, to just a few days in, that is, that is some of the most crucial part of your mead and its progression. So we're going to talk about what you need, we're going to talk about um, a couple things to consider, a couple things to think about as you're going through it, and just as a, um, something, things I wish I had known from the beginning, um, it is, yes, a throw it together and let it go, but then there are also some little things you can do to help the meat along, to help it be most successful. So um, if you want to check and follow kind of what I'm saying down below. Um, I have some notes I've made to try and help you out and you're welcome to print them off, you're welcome to read them with me, do whatever, but hopefully you can read them and get something out of them ultimately. That will help us or help me greatly. So check out the link and that will take you to the notes below for what I'm reading from. So, um, and I'm gonna kind of paraphrase from most of it. Uh, what, doesn't matter what kind of mead you're gonna make. If you're going to make a traditional, a Melamel, a Acer Glen, a Sizer, any of these, the million types of mead that we have, you need to follow these same things. You will need a few things when you first start your mead. Of course, they are the um, whatever ingredients you have, putting your mead together. I'm not going to talk about what you need to put your mead together other than to say this. You need honey, honey, water, and you need a kind of yeast. That will get you a traditional, and then whatever you want to do from there, whether it be adding fruit or anything else, that's up to you. But this is what you need for the basic. This is what every one of those categories needs. You need a hydrometer, which helps you read the gravity. And uh, that is super important to know how, how alcoholic your meat will be. So a hydrometer is very important. They're pretty cheap. They are fragile, so be careful. Uh, a long cylinder or something that you can put that, gra that hydrometer in that will ultimately allow you to uh, not hit the bottom of your container and see, truly see where your gravity is as you're measuring it. I use two things, yeast nutrient and uh, yeast energizer. Those are great for helping propel your mead along in its life, especially in those first 72 hours. Um, that helps them be energized and to, to start fermenting uh, well. And then finally, something like a degassing wand, um, which I have one, it's got little paddles on it. You don't need anything fancy like that. You can simply use a wooden spoon, something to where you can stir and uh, get some, some of that CO2 out of the uh, mead as it is fermenting be because there is some CO2 that's produced. So uh, using your hydrometer, the hydrometer is super important, like I said. You have a couple things. You have your original gravity, which is your starting point. Uh, for how your potential ABV for your meat. Um, and let's say that you put four pounds of honey into a gallon of water, you stir it all up, great. Your, uh, you put your hydrometer in there and it says 1.02, or excuse me, 1.12. That would take you out till, um, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but that would take you to say somewhere around 15-ish percent uh, ABV. Now, that is great knowledge to know because then you pick a yeast when you're using your yeast and you understand that, okay, my yeast can go up to 14%. Your 15% uh, ABV possibility or your 1.12 gravity is not going to be completely finished out by that 14% yeast that can only ferment out to 1.11. Uh, which means that you're left with residual sweetness, which that is great if you want to avoid having to back sweeten later. Lots of people do that because then you don't have to worry about trying to stabilize your mead, anything like that, which causes um, extra heartache and problems in, in the future. So if you want to have a sweeter mead, put more honey in than your yeast can handle, uh, but then there's another problem, and I'll, I don't want to get into it, this turns into a rabbit hole, but you'll need a yeast starter, which is basically just taking part of your must, putting your yeast in, letting the yeast colonize, then putting that into your new, um, into the rest of the must, and that will help that, uh, help that go. But ultimately, you can do that using your hydrometer to read those things. You can also use your hydrometer to watch how the fermentation is going. Um, let's say after 24 hours you want to check, is my fermentation moving? It started off at 1.12, oh it's now at 1.11, meaning the, the yeast are starting to ferment and use up those sugars. 
now. As that goes and goes, you can keep checking it, or, um, or, or finally, at the end, you want to use it, use your, your hydrometer to get a final gravity reading. That final gravity reading tells you how much um, of that uh, gravity your yeast truly used. So let's use our example of the 15% we had earlier, 1.12 gravity, giving us about 15%. And then we have also the, um, we, we have the 14% yeast. So let's say my yeast did their entire job. They went through 14%. They went through 1.11 gravity. I'm left with 1.101 because 1.12 minus 1.11 equals 1.01. I have about 1% left. I have some residual sweetness. Um, and that is only being told by your hydrometer. So use a hydrometer. That helps you out big time. Um, and I have listed in my notes here, there's an equation uh, where you can do some multiplication if you want, or there's charts online. You can, um, you can check that out. Now, there, while that's going on, your fermentation is going, you're going to notice that there's lots of CO2 coming out, which comes out through your uh, airlock. And that is great. That means your, your fermentation is going. Once that starts to slow down, you'll know that the fermentation is almost done. Amidst all of that chaos is going to be some CO2 that sits inside of your mead, which is where we talk about degassing. Um, and I'll get there in just one moment. Um, that was the first, that's the whole like little big jump overview of the 72 hours. So to back up just a little bit, you've started your mead, you have put your yeast in, and now you're going, what do I do now? Well, you need to take and uh, add, in my opinion, add some yeast nutrient or energizer. Some people believe and say that nutrients work um, as solely as a yeast nutrient or energizer, but there have been lots of studies and lots of debate, frankly, about this. And my opinion is don't rely on raisins to only be your yeast nutrient. They will work, kind of, but if you have a very high gravity mead, um, then you're gonna have some trouble with that. So you use the products that we can buy that are fairly cheap and we can do a couple things. When you're adding your yeast nutrient and energizer, you can do two methods. Um, in my opinion, there are just two for now. There's one of just putting all of it in in the beginning, giving them all the food, just like if you were going out of town and you left your, your cat a huge bowl of food, great. You could do that or you could do pay somebody to come by and give them uh, food over time. So there are the two different methods. The first method is you take all of your required yeast nutrient and energizer, put it in a thing, dump it all in with the must, stir it in, done. Which is fine, that one works. Um, it works decently well. The preferred method that I know lots of people do, I know I do, is the staggered nutrient method, which means that you take that same amount of yeast nutrient and energizer and you break it into four even parts. Those four even parts you would put in on different days. I would put on day zero, the first day I start my, my mead, um, I would put a quarter of those nutrients in and then I would start in. Day two, so not day two, uh, day zero is starting day, day one would be the next day, day two um, of fermentation would be when I add the next quarter. So you put it on zero, two, four, and six. And those, and then finally your nutrients are done. This allows for them to uh, slowly feed on those nutrients over time and lets them kind of ferment a little more efficiently. So I prefer the staggered nutrient method. Um, it does take a little more work, which is okay, but ultimately um, it does work more effectively than just throwing all of your uh, nutrient and energizer in. Uh, I, like I said, I prefer doing that and it's really necessary for high gravity meads to help feed your yeast along. Um, and I, I think I, I could go into another video about this, but if you do have a high gravity mead, meaning you're, you put a ton of honey into that mead, you're gonna want to probably do a yeast starter. It's really simple in that you take a portion of your um, uh, must, which is your honey and your water, out before you introduce all the yeast. You put your yeast into that smaller portion and let those yeast colonize, get some, some, uh, some movement going on to where they can multiply, then you put them into the rest of it and that allows for the yeast to ultimately be more successful. 
So I would do that if I were you, um, just because high gravity meads can be hard to handle. So uh, we've talked about now, that is the first you know, 24 hours you have made your mead, you have taken your must and maybe done a, a yeast starter, uh, you're doing a staggered nutrient schedule, Say so day one, day zero, you put in a quarter of your yeast nutrient, yeast energizer, and then day two, blah blah blah. Um, another mo important thing to do within that 72 hour window and really on, while the, f the fermentation is really vigorous, is to degas your mead. And that is a super simple concept. And that all you do is you take your degassing wand, or you take your spoon, or whatever it is, and you lightly stir the mead um, about once or twice a day while it's really fermenting, like I said. And you'll notice that there's a lot of bubbling, a lot of CO2 release. And that allows for the um, the CO2 to come out of the mead, but also for there to be a lesser chance of fusels. And fusels are when the off smells you get when your yeast are stressed. Whenever they, uh, yeast, excuse me, when the off smells or flavors when the yeast are stressed. So your uh, yeast will kind of freak out if there's too much CO2 in that um, mead in the beginning. That's not to say in the future you can't carbonate your mead, but you don't want it to be carbonated, obviously, while it's going. So we take our spoon, we stir it in there for the first 72 hours, even on from that, um, just to make sure there's no CO2 buildup within that, because it can cause those weird flavors, like we said. Um, the most important things, just a quick overview of all this, is your first 72 hours, you need to think about um, what nutrients you're going to add, uh, to your mead. It, it can go without nutrients, but you'll notice that it might have a harder time and you want your yeast to have the easiest time fermenting. If they have a hard time fermenting, that's when you run the risk of getting a weird flavor or of getting a weird smell. And um, honestly, that, that's just a bummer when you have to throw out a mead because we didn't take the steps in the future. The yeast nutrient and energizer are very cheap and you don't need a lot of it to be frank. So using that, your degassing wand, and then your hydrometer, between those three things, um, you will find that your mead will be most successful. Like I said, some people are going to say, down in the comments, you can just start your mead, let it go, never touch it, and it'd be fine. And I agree that that can be possible, but it is not as efficient, it's not as consistent, and you want to have a consistent mead making process, especially if you decide to dive further into it. So as a somebody who would hopefully consider himself to be a professional mead maker, and I do, um, I want to try and be as efficient as possible with every kind of mead that I make. So that's just kind of what I do. Um, I have briefly gone through all of these things. You can check out those notes below. I have also some, um, if you have any questions for me, you can check out my YouTube channel. You can check out, or you can uh, email me. You can also um, go on our Facebook and ask questions. But I wanted to hopefully get you involved in the first 72 hours, whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced person. This stuff is important to remember. So um, prioritize those first 72 to really even just a couple days later because those make a big difference in the life of your meat. So thank you for watching. Check out the links below. Check out the notes if you are interested in that. I appreciate uh, your support and I hope you guys have a nice day. Cheers.